Let's pull this back in. Wow, so nice, it's Canon. <laughs> What's up guys, Sam here. As you can tell from the title, we are unboxing the Canon EOS R3 today. Uh, this is one of, if not the first unit in Malaysia that's purchasable. Uh, thank you Canon Malaysia for hooking me up with this. They didn't, they didn't send this to me. Uh, I actually bought this with my own money. Who's gonna give you this camera for free? Uh, but anyways, yeah, I want to do an unboxing, really experience it with, together with you guys. I've actually had this for two days right now. I just have not touched it because I've been so busy with work. December is crazy. But yeah, I wanted to do an unboxing, just share a bit of my thoughts as to why I bought this camera. Uh, I'm also shooting with the, or testing out this new Rode microphone. I think this is the Lavalier 2. Uh, really love the design, might do a video about it or just an Instagram post uh, going into the Rode Wireless Go 2s. But let's not waste any more time, let's just open this bad boy up and see what we have. And this is, mm, look at that, the Canon EOS R3. Wow, I actually have it in my hands. Um, the camera is at the side there. I do like, well, I really love Unboxing new cameras is always a really wonderful experience. Uh, I enjoyed the unboxing experience of the 1DX Mark III. I didn't really like the R and R5, R6, uh, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's a story for another day. Let's just open it up straight right in front of you guys. Obviously here we have like the normal stuff, like we have a massive eyepiece. Can we see it right there? It's huge eye cup. Um, your manual, your promo for image Canon, which I think is really good, the warranty, and of course you have the strap, which I would never use. But something if you've never opened like the 1DX series of cameras, uh, they actually have this golden look. They don't actually have the name of the camera on it. Um, that's how you know you're a pro, when you don't have the name of your camera on the strap. Uh, let's see what's next. Let's open this together. And we have the camera right there. Oh, it's gonna drop. Well, something that I, I, I do appreciate is that I like that they went to for the cardboard look again. Like the previous R5, R6, the R was one of the worst unboxing experiences. It was just like everything just threw in together. But at least this is kind of like packaged uh, really sort, sort of decently. Cardboard. And I'm at the bottom, I'm guessing it's just a bunch of, yeah, it's the charger, it's the battery, cables, and uh, just like whatnot. So let's just leave this one here so that we can admire this beautiful. Mm, I like the smell as well. Ah, new cameras. So we have here the 1D, no, not the 1D, the EOS R3. Uh, just came out like that. And that was very anticlimactic, but yes. Here we have it, the brand new Canon EOS R3. It's amazing to actually have it in my hands. Uh, a year ago, around this period, I bought the 1DX Mark III. Obviously, I unboxed it in January, and it's so cool to see that it, it's really satisfying to know that, you know, after working so hard, within a year's time, I can actually afford the EOS R3 and just buy things that I, I want and can actually help me as a photographer. But I really love camera tech, and so that's why, well, I'll talk about what, some of the reasons why I bought the camera uh, in a bit. But, let's just put on the eyepiece, which is very, very big. And bam, there we go. Mm, wow, it's so light. It's it's just, it's... Does it really have that new camera smell? But mm, at least it's new. Let's see what's, is the cover on? Yep, the cover is on, just like that. Uh, let's put on a lens. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't actually have uh, any power uh, like any of my L series glass with me here but I will just be using the adapter just the normal adapter I don't actually own any RF glass as of now put it on and with this nifty 40 mil and there we go lens on the EOS R3 ah, lovely so a little bit of backstory as to why I kind of like chose this camera and hopefully this can help you kind of like understand the decision process. Uh, I own the 1DX Mark III and arguably it's my favorite digital photo camera. Uh, I love it for everything that it is, the way it feels, the kind of images that you can get out of it, the feeling of the, feeling of the camera. Um, 
just you know everything about it it's like the ergonomics just the and even the specs as well and so i was looking for a camera that could be could either make this my b camera or maybe become a b camera to my 1dx3 uh the r5 and r6 came out and i wasn't too impressed with those cameras mainly for the reason that they were still the ergonomics was not right the fact that i had to cheat, press like multiple buttons just to switch to video uh was didn't really make a lot of sense and i got so used to this smart controller at the back of the 1dx that honestly going to a camera that doesn't have it is a real deal breaker for me i find it so difficult to move focus points uh even though yes there's fantastic autofocus tracking like face detection and things like that but i still am the kind of guy that likes to shoot with single point i find that to be a lot more accurate and more towards what uh you know the, the kind of style that i shoot and thankfully the eos r3 has that it has that like smart controller right here and that toggle switch over here to switch quickly between photo and video i i really like that um but one of the major gripes that i had let's see how precarious that i can put it so i like, can trigger a lot of people but one of the th gripes that i really had about the 1dx mark 3 was number one the 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 height of the body uh size is not really a big deal to me when i'm shooting even when i'm shooting street photography i use the 1dx mark 3 uh, when i'm shooting corporate i use this camera uh the main reason is more for transportation because this it has this like very weird forehead at the top and so it doesn't really fit a lot of bags properly and it the bags kind of like have to force you have to kind of like force your zip in and as you can tell from this it they they cut off like a nice chunk at the, the top and just really saves a lot of space in your camera bag uh i do like the the grip and the ergonomics of this that's why I, I i like this camera but the main reason as to why i really picked up the r3 was that i've been wanting to switch to mirrorless for a while now and i just haven't found a mirrorless camera that fit the style of shooting that i do and the needs that i want i a lot of times when I'm shooting with mirrorless cameras, one of the biggest features I love about this is the silent shutter. Even the 1DX Mark III has it, um, only, but only if you shoot in live view. But the problem with silent shutter is that if your readout speed is not fast enough, you're going to have jello. You're going to have like, you know, just like artifacts on your, on your shots, which the R3 to what I've been testing does not seem to have that. Even the 1DX Mark III has that jello effect in uh in in silent shutter electronic shutter which i was not a huge fan of considering the price of the camera but this really hit the mark on a lot of things and especially that like the bsi sensor really fast readout um just 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 really had that especially when you're shooting electronic shutter no issues there i do like the quality of the of i i do like the low light quality on this camera uh, from what i've been testing out it does i can shoot at least one stop high I, higher iso compared to my 1dx3 which i really like obviously that slight four megapixel bump not really a big deal but obviously it's part of it as well that really helps but also another thing is really that um flip screen the 1dx mark 3 walls i do like it it's just that it's the lack of this flip screen it's such a big deal on my c70 they're shooting me right now it's fantastic just i could see everything right here but when i'm shooting photos just looking up looking down just being able to like articulate the screen in many many ways gives a lot of flexibility when i'm shooting as compared to like the 1dx3 which is just fixed uh so this was this camera was also a uh, a logical upgrade for me and the main reason for this is because it uses the same lpe 19 batteries that the 1dx3 has and at this point i would have including this box i would have six of those batteries which is a lot of money but uh, i like that it can last pretty much forever yeah uh other than that honestly the eye the eye control if as i when i tried it out uh it wasn't um I wasn't super impressed with it so it wasn't it's more of like a gimmick that's pretty cool to use at certain times it's cool to show off to your friends but not something that's really practical for me uh, as i've used this throughout a week of testing i had a pre-production model i really like the image quality coming out of it the 4k is fantastic the 6k raw is lovely i posted a video if you want to check that out uh, i will say that the 1080 on this camera is horrendous don't shoot 1080 with this camera because you produce really really it looks like 720 that's upscaled uh, really really over sharpened terrible footage 1080 but 4k actually very very nice to look at as compared to like the 1080 on this camera but yeah uh, overall it's honestly frankly speaking do i need this camera no 
I don't need this camera. In fact, I don't need a new camera. But for me, I I enjoy using new gear. I, I, I love cameras as much as I love shooting. You know, the tech that goes behind certain things is something that I personally enjoy. And I absolutely hate it when people say like, stop caring about your gear, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, sure, if you want to not care about your gear, that's fine. But for people who genuinely enjoy cameras, enjoy learning about cameras, enjoy using cameras and just appreciating technology for what it is, I think that, you know, that's fair. As long as you're going out and continuously shooting and using your cameras, I don't see a problem with upgrading. But then again, that's probably me justifying this massive purchase. Uh, I I do want to put a disclaimer, quick disclaimer. I, I also do want to say something that I don't think this is the perfect camera. I think there are a lot of things that are wrong with this camera, like the mini H, the micro HDMI, sorry, which doesn't really make sense. Um, and a couple more quirks that I can't really think at the top of my head, but I know that as I'll be shooting with this a lot more, I'll probably come and uh, come up with it. And I do plan to po post a proper, at least after three months review using this camera to know whether, whether this is for you, because as coming from like a, a hybrid shooter of being a filmmaker and photographer, I do need cameras that are good with video as well as with photo. And I think as of right now, the R3 does fit that really nicely for me in the ergonomics and the like quality realm that i'm looking for yeah uh really happy with this gonna go out and shoot with it tomorrow since i've already unboxed it since i've got a lot more work uh, i've as you can see i posted quite a number of like test shots test images as well as some test videos that i've been shooting with the pre-production model very happy with the results and i'm really really excited to use this camera uh, in the real world but I so uh, for those of you who have stayed long enough, uh, I just want to say one more thing, and that is something that I like to say every time I post a new camera or talk about cameras, and that is, don't look at this video as me trying to show off or it's like, oh man, I can never reach where you are. Oh wow, you're so rich and things like that. Ten years ago, I was in your shoes. I remember. Excuse me. Uh, I remember when the 5D Mark III was uh, the, the in thing at that time, you know, I really, really wanted that camera. I just couldn't afford it, you know, as a student, like I just couldn't, I, I, didn't, even, I, I didn't even know how to think like 14 grand at that time. It's, it's just so unattainable, but after years and years of hard work, I've been doing this for a long time already. And after years, I can I can look at these prices and say, okay, yeah, actually that's pretty doable. But it came with a lot of patience, a lot of hard work, a lot of you know, a lot of time basically. And so that I hope that this encourages you um, to continue working hard and to continuously uh, keep moving with your craft. Because if you love cameras, eventually, if you're going in the in the direction of working hard, being patient, looking for clients, and things like that, you will be able to afford cameras like this in the future probably not today probably not tomorrow maybe not next month maybe not even next year but eventually if i can do it you can do it as well and i think this is a testament to uh, to that so all the best guys uh, thank you so much for watching if you have any questions about the r3 do let me know i'll be more than happy to test it out and talk about it on instagram you can follow me right here uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching again and i will see you in the next one with this camera I love I love this one as well as as well as this one but don't let them Okay it's getting weird already bye guys <laughs>